she didn't have a guy like that. Waylon Jennings was not about to be stopped by anyone. Brimming with confidence at age 28, he left Lynn and the marriage and swaggered into Nashville in 1965, ready to find fame and fortune. And Nina, it's over. There's nothing that's left now to say. Although he met with some initial success, even starring in a low-budget film entitled The Nashville Rebel, mostly what he encountered was frustration. Nashville seemed to have a business system that he felt had no place for his music or his ideas. He butted heads with the system and the people who ran it. I loved Chet Atkins, and I hated, I hated so, so bad, you know, that I couldn't just, you know, tout out of whatever he wanted. Boy, he started cussing me from one end to the other, and I cussed with the best of two, I think. Finally, I told him, I said, I don't have to sit here and listen to this crap. I said, I'm going to go upstairs, and if when you want to talk, just holler at me upstairs. And that was my first meeting with Waylon. <laughs> the move to Nashville turned into years of nonstop backbreaking touring, paltry record sales, and more financial hardship for the singer. You know, the most you can make is $2,000 a night performing. You, if you was pretty hot, you could make that. And then half the time, they didn't pay you. Living on uh, bologna and cheese, and, <laughs> and we were in a, a little old station wagon that we bought from a funeral home in Phoenix, carrying all our instruments and running up and down the road. I can't believe that some of the things that I did, you know, in some of the places I'd play. I'd drive all day long, get there about five, about an hour before the show started, and put on them clothes that were dirty, but they looked good. <laughs> get in there and, and play and do a show. You literally would do a, an 800 to 1,000 mile throw between shows. Get up and get to the show, eat, have a Coke and a candy bar and, and a hit of speed and go on stage. And that was the life it was. Uh, uh, I, I don't see how he did it for all those years. For Waylon Jennings, however, the biggest disappointment he encountered in Nashville was in his recording career. Are shattered, don't you see? He could never make the records he wanted to make within the highly regimented Nashville music system. They would go in to cut an album, and you know, you're going to cut an album in, in four days, and, and you know, they're going to provide you with the songs, and the producer's going to provide you with the songs, they're going to provide you with the arrangement, and you're going to shut up and sing. That's not... That's not art in any form, fashion, or anything. Whalen's life in Nashville was nothing like he thought it would be. By 1968, a short third marriage to Barbara Rood was breaking up as well. Plus, he had developed a strong dependence on prescription pills to keep going on the road. Of course, he'd have a jar of pills to choke a horse. I could think of a lot of excuses for it, you know, working too hard and all that, but stupidity is the best one that fits it. But traveling was not all misery for Whalen. 